The Human Machine Interface Group is headed by Richard Bolt. Eye movements have been used for a number of purposes. They've been used to study where people look on a page when they're reading. They've been used to study where pilots look at the instrument arrays in airline cockpits. And they've been used to, to study where children look uh, at their favorite characters on Sesame Street. We tell, for example, whose turn it is to take in a conversation by where the eyes are trained in conjunction with what we're saying and the total context of the situation. Now, one of the areas where eye movements have not been used has been at the human-computer interface as part of the essential information that a computer should have about its human user. What I've been doing is trying to study how eye movements as output, output from the person to the machine, and indeed from the machine back to the person, can be brought into the human-computer interface. Consider the situation of, well, a wall of a room portrayed here in graphics. And this little flying dot is their momentary point of regard on the scene. Now, if we were to record that, it would look like so. Here, we're preserving the momentary point of regard and recording the distribution of visual attention about the scene. And very quickly here, we can see that the interest is very high in the candelabra and the andions, but not very much so in the ship model, nor in the paintings particularly. So if a program here were trying to explain or describe these items in this room to a, an observer, it would concentrate mostly upon the brass items here and not so much upon the others. Let's consider a situation now where we have two programs, one called Looker and the other called Showa, interacting in the following way. Looker will be looking about, and its eye contact is shown by this flashing square. And the flashing on of these items corresponds in a very speeded up fashion to the fact that Showa would now be giving some kind of explanation. Another example of a graphic that might be explained by the Showa program would be the exterior wall of a building with architectural details on the edges, a certain type of brickwork, windows and door details. And the explanation of the details of this wall would be modulated by where upon this wall the looking of the looker program was concentrated. Obviously, if it were concentrated on the doors, the explanation by the Showa program in uh, synthesized speech would concentrate upon telling about the details of that door. Eventually, Showa will be personified in a small graphic like so and would establish eye contact back out to the uh, human observer. So there would be a conversation going back and forth between the Looker program on the one hand and the Showa program. The Showa program paying attention to where the simulated point of regard was upon this scene. At some point in all of this exploration, we'll be taking out the Looker program and substituting a real human observer who will be eye tracked and the looking by the human upon this screen will drive the response of the Showa program. The ultimate aim here is to improve the quality of conversationality at the interface between the computer and its human user.